We did grass species density and manage and unmanage natural areas. Expansion of agriculture in the Midwest has eliminated 99% of native prairie and the remaining native prairie we have is infested by non-native grasses. The grasses that we studied in this study was smooth brome grass and Kentucky bluegrass. Um, these non-native grasses are cool season grasses that grow earlier in the season than most native grasses. So they have the ability to outcompete native grasses. Um, the purpose of the study was to compare the density of non-native grasses versus native grasses in managed and unmanaged sites. Managed areas are areas of grass that are actively treated to promote growth of native species. And then unmanaged sites are just natural regrowth after a disturbance in an area. Uh, natural grasses are important, or native grasses are important for the Midwest ecosystems because they provide cover and thermal protection during winter for native species. And they allow flowers to grow along with the native grasses rather than a monoculture of uh, invasive species. And our hypothesis was the abundance of non-native grasses differ between managed and unmanaged natural areas. All right, so the location of our experiment was along four city parks by the Red River and the Fargo-Moorhead area. Um, we did two sites that were managed and two sites that were unmanaged. And the samples that we took consisted of four 30 meter transects and um, a, one, a one meter squared quadrat, quadrat every 15 meters and a half meter quadrat every five meters about. Um, the data was transformed uh, natural log to meet standard assumptions and data were subjected to ANOVA test to determine if the abundance of native or non-native species was significant based upon the interaction of site times transect location. So the sample sites here just um, give a visual representation of where in the Fargo-Moorhead area we took these samples. And then um, this just gives a representation here. We did them both on the inside and outside of each site. So the results here are just um, kind of a great visual representation of what we found um, in their box plots here. So the red ones, um, the lines are kind of what we really are looking at here as the average from our raw data. Um, show the average on the outside of each site and then the blue ones here are looking at the inside of each site. So the upper one is looking at the native grasses in both the managed and unmanaged natural areas. And we kind of saw the trend that, um, you know, in these unmanaged areas, both on the inside and the outside, our native grasses were lower. In the managed areas, we had a higher abundance of native grasses, especially in the inside of each site. Um, it was kind of more protected from any adjoining habitats. Um, we did kind of have an outlier here. Um, it wasn't a statistical outlier, but it wasn't as um, high a quality when we looked at our native grass abundance. Um, and this one had been restored quite a while ago compared to this one. This one was a, a newly restored um, and better well-kept site there. But then when we went and looked at our um, non-native grass species, we saw, you know, kind of across the board that on the outside of each site, um, there was a high abundance of non-native species. Again, this could be a combination of the fact that they are just adjoining other habitats that maybe are unmanaged and um, just the unmanaged sites here, even on the inside, show a higher abundance of non-native grass species. So overall, um, after running the data through the ANOVA test, we saw that um, there was a significant difference in the abundance of the native grass species based on the interaction of site and transect location. Um, and then on the flip side of that, there was also a significant difference on the abundance of the non-native or invasive species, again, on that interaction of the site and transect location. So from this, we can conclude that a small number of non-native species allow for a higher number and greater diversity of native species. Um, and a lot of this can be attributed to a lack of competition. Oftentimes the invasive species uh, start earlier in the season. So if there's less of them to begin with, um, then the native species have a chance of establishing and taking root in the site. Um, and then without the grazing and um, natural wildfires that used to keep up these prairies due to habitat fragmentation, um, this kind of shows that active management of prairies is important for reducing the competition from those um, invasive species and really kind of bringing back prairie habitats to the area. 
And again, here, it just kind of is restating that if the non-native grass species abundance is not properly controlled, they're likely to outcompete any native grass species that are in that site, um, which could also lead to a monoculture and uh, subject the site to um, diseases and things like that, uh, which is not good for the ecosystem. And then here we just have some pictures um, of some of the uh, both invasive and native species that we found in the sites in the area.